Hello guys and welcome back to the part two of the starter factory. So last week I showed you how to produce plates, rods, screws, copper wire and cable, as well as concrete, almost at 100% efficiency, as well as a little overflow storage system, which is sending items to the sink. Today, however, we are going to expand this. So this factory is going to produce reinforced iron plates, rotors, smart plating and modular frames. Unfortunately, it won't be 100% efficient due to the ratios of resources that we're going to be using. However, the excess can be sunk and I'll show you how. And speaking about node purity, one thing that I didn't cover, I just assumed that you knew last week, is that you can go up to a node and if you look at the deposit, it will say normal if it's normal, pure or import pure depending on which type it is. A pure node like here would generate 120 ore per minute with a Mark 1 miner. A normal node will generate 60 resource and an impure will generate 30 resources per minute. So with that said, it's time to get to work. And the first thing we want to think about is extending our factory. Now for this build, we will need just under four normal nodes worth of iron. Now there is nothing stopping us from building anywhere within the map. However, because we have the storage units here, it'll probably be best for us to continue building out this way into this space here. So to start off, we are going to delete what we've done here. In fact, we'll probably open up this as well, but there's no need to do that just yet. And from here, we're going to build another grid out. Um, we're going to go 19 across. We're going to start from above because the terrain does rise. We want to go 19 out. So that's just to that wrong. And it should be nine in depth as well. So we're just going to fill this in now. And once done, you should have a grid like this. At this point, I'm going to build a bus and connect all of the four normal iron nodes that we need to the factory. As you can see, the iron is nicely arriving to our factory, which means we can now get to work on the reinforced iron plates. In order to save space horizontally and to remind ourselves that we can work vertically, for this we are going to use two floors. We're going to start off building the first floor and then we will look at what we're going to do on top afterwards. With our iron bust here, the first thing that we're going to be doing is taking a one of the lines straight across, ideally the one furthest to the right, and we're going to be bringing these 60 to become reinforced iron plates. Next thing that we want to do is place two smelters. They're going to be side by side in this location um, in the center of their foundations. Next, I'm going to remove these four foundations and I'm going to slip in an awesome sink. You do not need to do this now, uh, but I'm going to. That'll be used for later. At this point, we're going to grab a splitter and place that against this smelter. And we're going to run these two belts into the smelters. These will then be set to iron ingots. From here, we're going to want 15 iron ingots going up to the top. And we want a merger followed by another splitter so that we can send 15 ingots to the left and these 30 straight on. At this point, you only need to use Mark 1 belts. We're now going to use elevators in this section. However, we can't do that until we've got the floor holes unlocked and we've placed the upper floor. So at this point, we're going to go across to attachments and we're going to buy the conveyor lift floor hole. And while we're at it, just because I want them later on, we're going to purchase the concrete wall. In order to get the right height that we need for this ceiling, we're going to place two foundations high. Then we're going to grab another one meter foundation. Then we will zoop it across. At this point, you should have a ceiling just above. You do not need to fill the whole thing in just yet. But we're going to place a floor uh, elevator floor hole just above, about there. And we're going to take it 
from the elevator door hole. Swap the direction using R and connect it together. We're then going to grab this line and pull it all the way so it's in line with this output in the center. And this side will also come to the exact same um, line here. You will then want to place floor holes in the center of those and also bring the elevators down so that we're now having all of the 60 ingots brought to the top floor. Next, fill this in. We're going to go all the way to the end and from here we're going to place three constructors. These ones will be placed for iron plates and this one for iron rods. The first two iron plate constructors are going to be set to 75% clock speed. So in order for us to do this, we need to unlock the strange energy readings in the MAM. Now to do this, you're going to want to find some blue slugs. You only need one and you can find them dotted around the world. Once you've collected it, we can now research them in the map. It'll take three seconds. And next we want to unlock the overclocking, which is in this section. Whilst waiting for un overclocking to be unlocked, we're going to connect these up. To do this, take the elevator from the conveyor floor hole and then connect it up. Next, we're going to place two more constructors in line, but the opposite way around next to here. I'll also remove all of these walls because we won't be needing them. From here we need to grab a splitter and we're going to place that next to these. We're going to run the rod straight into these two screw constructors. We're then going to, in the same position, oh, the same position, place the conveyor elevator holes and connect these up. Looking at the plate constructors, we can now merge them together. And we're going to place an assembler just in front. Finally, we can add a conveyor elevator lift hole just there as well as a connection. Thinking about it, something that I could have done, and I recommend you should do, is to merge these together first and then send them under. Then from beneath, ah, perfect. We're going to run these screws in a straight line. To here, and we're going to connect them with this elevator. We now need to underclock these to 75%. The iron rod constructor will be left at 100%. And these two constructors will also be set to 75%. Next, we need to set this to reinforce our iron plates. Grab another elevator floor hole, place that in front. And then underneath here, we shall add our storage unit and we will bring it down to the bottom where we will add another smart splitter like we did before. And run that into the storage unit. On the left, we'll have reinforced iron plates and then on the right or the center, depending on how you're going to do your merging line, we'll put the overflow. And there we are, our reinforced iron plate 
assembly line is ready. Moving on to the rotors, we're now going to grab the smelters and we're going to place them so that they're in the center of this um, column with two foundations apart and we're also going to place a second one here. For this section you're only going to need to place uh, to take 45 iron ore so you can either choose to load balance this or personally I'm not too bothered about that so I'm just going to go ahead and run these uh, this iron straight into the smelter and let it back up a little. These two smelters will then be set to 75% and the next thing that you're going to want to do is place a merger in between them and from here we're going to do the next level. Let's just do three for now and like before we're going to grab our conveyor holes we're going to place them just above us. We'll then take the iron ingots all the way to the top. At this point, first uh, I was mistaken, we're going to have to place another line and from here we're also going to place foundations across the bottom here. And we're going to bring this up, we're going to bring it up to a splitter. It's going to be facing the bottom. From here we will place three more constructors. These will all be set to iron rods. We're now going to grab the rod outputs. So we're going to place a merger in front of this one facing the left. We'll do the same on this one facing the right. In the middle we're going to need a splitter and we're going to divide the rods between the left and the right. On the right hand side you're going to want 10 rods heading towards this section and we're going to want 5 heading in this direction. So we should now have 20 rods on this side and 25 on this. From here we're going to be placing our wall conveyor holes again. And the same on this side too. At this point we're going to be placing three more constructors. These are going to be for the screws. We will run them in line with these. And we will also grab another floor hole. Over there. And we're going to run these splitters in a manifold configuration. We're using a manifold here because we need to split the rods into 2.5 constructors and I would much rather use a manifold than worry about underclocking to find the perfect balance. Underneath here make sure that these two holes are connected. Like so. At this point we're going to grab a merger and we're going to connect these together. These will be set to screws, with two being 100% and one being underclocked to 50%. Whilst connecting these mergers up, make sure that you're using a Mark II belt because you are going to have 100 items on this at full capacity. And finally we need to place the rotor assembler. Now I want this in line with this one ideally if possible. So we're going to find the point where we've got our rods coming along from here. Connect your screws up to the rotors and then grabbing another floor hole. We'll place this directly in front. Then underneath here we should also be able to connect these up. Like so. Next we need to connect the rotors outputs with another storage unit and manifold that is going to overflow to the sink like we did for the reinforced iron plates. The overflow line will then be brought down then brought across
to the awesome sink. Congratulations, at this point you're producing both reinforced plates and rotors for your factory. At this point we're going to be looking at modular frames, and here we're going to need 48 iron ore per minute. Taking the iron ore across, and from here we're going to be placing two more smelters side by side in the middle of the foundations. Once you've connected the splitter to them, the left hand side one will be set to 90% clock speed, whilst this one will be set to 70%. From here we're going to be placing a constructor in front, just do it just here. And this one will also be sent to 90% clock speed for iron plates. Once again, we're going to be placing two more constructors down next to this. And this one will be set to rods at 90%, uh, 60%, sorry, so that we're producing nine per minute. And then in front of this, we will place another constructor. And this will be set to screws running at 90%. This means we're now producing 36 screws per minute. And then over here, we will also set it to rods. This one will be set to 80%. We're now going to bring the rods, screws and plates up to the top. At this point, we need to place the assemblers for the modular frames and also the reinforced iron plates. So what we're going to do is run this alongside these ones, the same point. We want to make sure that we have space just here for the rods to come up. So they're just going to uh, come up through here if we go underneath. We should be able to do that really quick. And grab it from here and then down. See that these are then connected. Next, we need to place the reinforced iron plate assembler. I think this is correct. We want this in line with this. If we grab one of these, we can just pop this through and have a look. You see it's not quite right. So we're going to go one more across. Okay, and from here, we're going to want to place a floor hole. I think there will do. Grab our elevators and we're bringing the plates up through the floor with the assembler like so. Here we need to place a spot for these screws to come up. Go underneath, we can place that there. And I think with a little bit of luck this will be in line. Perfect. Right angle. So we now have the iron plates, the screws, and the rods coming through to these assemblers. So the last thing that we need to do here is to bring the reinforced iron plates around and down, and then back into the modular frame assembler. From here, we're going to do the same that we did before with this. We're going to Bring these down in the same position. And at this point, we can place another um, storage container and then set up the storage unit system like we did before. One thing to note here is that the reinforced iron plate assembler needs to be set to 60% so that the modular frame assembler can run at 100%. All that's left to do now is to connect the rest of the stuff downstairs to the power grid. And there you are, we have our modular frames added to the manufacturing line. At this point, we now need to produce smart plating so that we can advance the space elevator. For this, we're going to need 46.5 iron ore per minute, so we're going to bring the last line over. To keep things simple, we're going to bring that iron line all the way across once again to another two smelters. These two smelters will be placed again in the center 
At this point, we need to underclock the two smelters. The one on the right will be set to 60%. And the one on the left will be set to 95%. At this point, we're going to be placing another constructor directly in front of the one on the right. We will run the iron ingots to this constructor, which will be uh, producing plates at 60%. On the left hand side, we're also going to place two more constructors. On the left hand side we're going to be placing a splitter which will feed directly into the two constructors. The left hand constructor will be set to 90% clock speed for iron rods and the one on in the center here will be set, set to iron rods at 100%. On the other side of this we're going to have a splitter on the middle and we're also going to have a merger on the left. Now, the reason for this is we want five of these to go across to the left hand one. So we have 18.5 rods yeah, in this section. And then we're also going to grab another merger here. So we're going to want 10 rods in this section. At this point, you want to place a conveyor pole just here in the center and then we're going to bring this all the way around it looks a little funky but trust me on this the next thing that we're going to do is cover all of these like so we're going to place a conveyor hole here Let's see there we go we also want another one directly in front of here and make that one another one directly in front of here on the top side we're going to want to take these rods And then we're going to feed them into a splitter, like so. Then we're going to grab two more constructors in line here. And they're going to be set to screws. One of these needs to be set to 85% clock speed. And then we're going to merge these on this side. You will need to use a Mark II belt at this point. And what we're going to do, actually if we place a splitter here, we'll place a merger in front. In this section, a Mark II belt. We can have a Mark I here, and we're going to split the top. Now this is just going to split a total of 50 screws in this section, which will go towards our rotor production. So we're going to grab our assembler and place it in line with uh, this. I've done this the wrong way around. After you've placed this splitter, we're going to place a merger just up from this. The reason for that is because this is going to be taking screws to the rotor assembly and this side is going to take screws to the reinforced iron plate section. Next, let's place an assembler for the reinforced iron plates that are going to be used to make sure they're in line with the previous assemblers and also in line with this hole. We'll connect the plates up and now we'll collect this, connect the screws up and set this to reinforce down plates and it's going to be running at 40% clock speed. 
To the left of this, we're going to place our rotor assembler. Again, it needs to be in line with both the assemblers we've previously placed and also the elevator hole for the rods. And from here, we're going to connect this up with the screws. At this point, we need to extend this a further two. And we're now going to place another assembler just next to this one in line. And at this point, we want to bring these round about there. And here we're going to place some more conveyor lift holes. These are going to take the reinforced iron plates and the rotors, which should be set to 50% speed, to here. To do this, we're going to place more bear holes. We're going to connect these together. A nice 90 degree. Like so, and eat. Cool. At this point, we can now place once again, as is now familiar, the floor hole. And on the other underside, another storage unit along with a smart splitter overflow. Uh, system and do remember that all of this is going to be covered so you won't actually see split at uh, the elevator there should you not wish to at this point we're going to grab our conveyor elevators and run them all the way down all we need to do now to connect all of this to the power grid. So now that we've got smart plating, it's time to start decorating this part of the factory ready for us to finish. I'm going to try and keep to the same style that we've got here. So we're going to repeat the same kind of front and uh, we may try and do something a little bit more decorative on the back. That's better. And the next thing that we need to do obviously is to add uh, these in front of them. And we'll also run these across the top. I'm not happy with the outer walls due to the, the way they're positioned. So we're going to grab some foundations. Now I'm going to go with these. And the reason is that with these, we can replace this section. At this point, we have the outer wall and the front looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with how this is looking. That being said, I do not want all of this to be exactly the same as the week previous. So we're going to work on some concrete walls now. Now we will be using this section next week in our final part of this uh, series where we will talk about coal power to get you up and running, as well as some steel production, copper sheets and AI limiters, which you can put into the sink. But for the time being, we're going to cover this. And what we're going to do is grab some walls. What we're going to do here is uh, grab this one and we're going to hold down E and we're going to use right click to go to the next material and select this in concrete. We now need the inverted version again in concrete. We're doing this to create a nice little pattern in the side for us. One thing that I love about the concrete in particular is that it tends to be on the front section of the wall, which means that no matter what type you use here of these uh, metal walls, 
you're always going to have a clear line of the concrete afterwards. But we're going to run this all the way up like so. You can see how we're getting a nice little shape out of this. On the back, seeing as we don't have doorways yet, although we could unlock them, I'll leave them for you. Uh, we are going to go with, let's see, if we can do it. Let's see how low we can go kind of little tiny slit kind of like that might use that in another save we've also added some uh, arched windows i tend to like the frameless ones for this but seeing as we haven't unlocked them yet we're going to take these we'll cover this and then i think we'll add this backing again try and keep it all within the same theme whilst giving each section its own little nuance, so to speak, to make it stand out. And there we are, not too bad. Last thing I want to do for this is just add some more biomass generators just on the side to keep us going until we can get those coal power plants up and running. And there we are. I must admit it's starting to look a bit like a Gigafactory from Tesla, but that's not a bad thing. Especially with it being a starter factory with only 10 hours worth of gameplay really in it, into it, it's not bad at all. And the idea of this is just to get you started and that's exactly what this is doing. Before you know, we'll have coal power generators running and you'll be able to build as much as your heart desires. So guys, if you did find it helpful, please drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And like last week, this will also be put on our Satisfactory Tips website so that you can download the save yourself. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to our amazing patrons, most notably our solo clips patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag and James Irwin, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Dixie Chris and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.